All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at the new, newly released Emacs 29.1. Now I'm sitting here inside of a Debian 12.0 virtual machine where I have just added the unstable Debian package repositories to my package config. I was hoping to do a video using Ubuntu for this, but they're kind of lagging behind in getting the, the new Emacs out. So here we are, we're just gonna apt install Emacs and we'll go and do the GTK version for now. Of course, if you're on Debian Unstable, you can run this command exactly. And I know that Arch as well has um, Emacs 29 out already. Great, with that installed, let's go, out, go ahead and fire up Emacs. First things first, you can already see that we've got this uh, small flood of native compilation warnings. And I double checked, that's actually a feature from Emacs 28 where Emacs can compile ELISP code to native um, code, which is supposed to really help speed up a lot of programs. But it does have a tendency to generate uh, this little warnings buffer. Now, the first thing I wanna do is just go ahead and load a, a nice dark theme. My, fa my favorite has always been Tango Dark. So we'll go with that. And then I will hop quickly to my scratch buffer and just increase the font size um, for you guys watching at home. With that done, we can go ahead and hop into what I really want to show off, which is a combination of three new features of Emacs 29. And I figured it would be easiest for me to show this off just in uh, looking at some Rust code. So I've already created a hello, uh, basically a hello world Rust package for us to look at. And of course we have main.rs. Now you can see down here in the mode line that we're in fundamental mode. So Emacs currently doesn't know that this is actually Rust code. Now, the first major feature I want to talk about is tree sitter integration. So for those of you who don't know what tree sitter is, it's basically a parser library that focuses on really quickly parsing code. As part of that parsing, <laughs> it, it allows for really nice syntax highlighting, and it also enables kind of more structural editing of code. So it basically lets you do things like delete around this function or delete this function's arguments, things like that. Now, we're not gonna focus on any of those cooler features today. We're just gonna show you how to actually load these tree sitter modes that come with Emacs and the nice syntax highlighting that they give you. So what we're gonna to try to do is meta x rust ts mode and we're gonna get some serious warnings this time. The most important of which is that we cannot activate tree sitter because the language grammar for Rust is not available. Now this is one downside of these new tree sitter modes that you do have to install the grammars, but Emacs 29 also includes a tool for doing just that. So we can go ahead and do tree sit, install language grammar, and if we type Rust, it's gonna interactively prompt us for building this. And it even knows the Git repository of the grammar itself. So we hit enter, we accept the default branch, the default subdirectory, the default C compiler, and the default C++ compiler. And it will fetch it and build the library for us. Now, as I found out in the first take of this video, you do actually need to have both Git installed and GCC, or some other C compiler. Because it really does fetch them with Git, build them, <laughs> and install them to your path. So if we try this again, you'll see that we now have nice syntax highlighting. So there's the first new feature of Emacs 29, tree sitter modes. This works for basically all the language modes I've tried. Rust mode, there's Python TS mode, there's YAML TS mode, TOML TS mode, JSON TS mode, and you can follow the same procedure for setting all of those up. Now that we have tree sitter running, it would be a good time to try to actually compile our Rust code. So what I usually use for this is mx compile, and we're just going to try to run, we're going to, just going to try to do cargo run. You'll see, of course, that our cargo command is not found. So this is a really good time <laughs> to hop over to our .emacs.d slash init.el file and start doing just a little configuration. Now, in the first take of this video, I found that I needed to add both of, both of these things to get cargo to work. This is the thing I tried first. Um, add to list exec path and then the path to my cargo bin directory. And I expected that to work, 
But if you look up here, um, when you try to do cargo run, it actually loads bash. So it seems that you may also need to call this command, set env path to concat get env path with the contents of uh, this again. So this is basically the equivalent of export path equals path colon dot 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 that you may be used to from shell um, initialization files. What if we do both of those? Then we should be able to recompile and cargo actually works. Now that we have that set up, let's try to look at the next new feature I want to talk about, which is eglot. Eglot is an LSP client that is now built into Emacs. So if I run eglot, it's actually going to prompt me because it still knows about RLS as well as Rust Analyzer, but we can tell it to use Rust Analyzer. And the way that I'll know that this is working is that if I hop down here, There we go. You'll see that I'm getting the signature of the function down at the bottom. What I'm not getting that I would really like to get is actually some completion information. So if we wanted to get this kind of completion, we, at least as far as I know, need to add an additional package. And this brings us to another great new feature of Emacs 29, which is the fact that use package, the package management macro, is also included with Emacs. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, you will have definitely seen me use use package, but you've also seen me do something like, if not package installed p, install use package. And we have to do all that kind of stuff. Use package itself, again, is now included in Emacs 29. So if I want to install a completion package, such as company, I can just say use package company, ensure t. And company mode is in the Elpo repository, so it'll just install without any other configuration. Back to our Rust file, and now I can activate company mode. And now that we've activated company mode, we can go ahead and do this, and you'll see this list of completions. Of course, I usually use different bindings for this, but the default bindings are meta n and meta p to do this, and then if you hit enter, it accepts the completion. So now you can see, hello again, And we can recompile this again if we want. We'll see that it worked. Okay, now we've got company mode set up, we've got eglot set up, and we've got Rust TS mode set up. But what we don't have is the ability for Emacs to remember that uh, in the future. So in addition to our use package configuration and these couple of environment variables we set here, we actually want to add a couple more things. Again, we can use use package. And let's go ahead and configure Rust TS mode for now. Again, we're gonna ensure that it's installed and we're gonna add a couple of hooks. The first hook we want is Rust TS mode hook. And we're gonna tell it to call eglot enable. Or eglot, I think it's eglot ensure. Eglot ensure. And we're also gonna to wanna to turn on company mode. And then we can make this, now that we have this anyway, we can make this a config section on our, um, on our TS mode thing. Okay, now the other thing that I know we're going to want is to actually inform Emacs that we want to activate Rust TS mode every time we open a Rust file. And the way we do that is we actually are going to add to list. And we can actually activate company mode in our Emacs file. Add to list. We want to add to our auto mode a list. And what we add to that uh, looks a little bit confusing. <laughs> We're going to add another list that's composed of this dot rust ts mode. And we can evaluate that. 
And now that we have that set up, we should basically be ready to um, close Emacs and restart it. Now, another trick for doing that, but after we hop back to main.rs, is another new feature of Emacs 29. I guess the last one we'll touch on today, which is restart Emacs. Most of the time when you do configuration, you don't need to do that, but sometimes you do. And in this case, we wanted to restart it anyway. So let's try finding our hello source main rs. And we will see that it did not work. Now, again, in the first take of this video, I actually mentioned this explicitly, that we want to make sure that Emacs is not creating a .emacs file. For some reason, it did create one this time, um, and it put our custom variables in it. Makes sense. So we're going to remove .emacs and .emacs tilde. And then once we've done that, we should be able to successfully launch Emacs again with all of our new configuration involved. And we will try to find hello source main rs. There we go. We can see that we're in Rust TS mode. We've got our nice syntax highlighting. We can see company in the mode line, and we can see eglot running. Just to double check, we can try this again. File, create, hello world. You can see that we're getting things like inlay hints. We got this automatic import when we accepted that completion. And everything nice like that. So there you have it. That show, We showed off a bunch of the new features in Emacs 21. And we also got a pretty nice uh, setup for developing Rust. If you guys are interested in seeing me set up some additional language modes, please let me know down below. I'm still using LSP mode in my own configuration, but Eglot seems pretty cool. I might actually build up my own configuration um, based around this right here, using the new tree sitter modes and Eglot. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.